Welcome back to Tiling Cottage. Today we're going to demonstrate how to grout this area of tiles that we've done previously in my video. Firstly, what we need to do, we need to take out the tile spacers using, starting from the top using our hands to take them out. Sometimes they can be quite stubborn to pull out, especially when we're using larger format tiles and there's a lot more weight pressing down on the tunnel spacer. So when they become more difficult to pull out, we can use a pair of nippers like this or a pair of pliers and just get the spacer there and then we just gently pull it out like so, okay? But generally speaking, using a smaller format tile like this, we can normally get them out just using our hands. The curing time for tiling is at least 24 hours. So if I finish this job, at say one o'clock in the afternoon, I would wait the following day, one o'clock, before I would start to take the tile spacers out and get the area prepared for grouting. Space here that's quite stubborn, it won't come out using my hands. So, what I'm going to use is a pair of tile nippers or a pair of pliers. I place it like so, and then I can just gently pull the spacer out. Okay, now I've took out all the tile spaces, I'm just going to remove the masking tape that we put up on our previous video. That was to make sure that these three tiles stayed in position and didn't slide out of position. Okay. Now we've taken all the spaces out of the area that we're going to grout, we just, before we go any further, before we mix the grout, we must make sure that all the tiling area is nice and clean and free from mess and uh, surplus adhesive. Also, there will be pen marks as well that we need to get rid of because when we apply the grout, the pen mark colour is red there. As you can see, it can stain the colour of the grout and discolour the grout. So it's very important before we start grouting is to use a sponge and get rid of any surface mess. Also be mindful to use a standing knife or a scraper, making sure there's no tile adhesive protruding from the tile joints. It's also important to make sure that the joint is really empty of any adhesive so that when we grout, we get a full completion of grout into the joint, right back to the substrate. Okay, we don't want adhesive just maybe one or two mil behind the edge of the tile here, this tile joint. We want to be able to get the grout to go right back to the surface, to the substrate. So what we do, we use a sharp blade, we just gently cut back the tile adhesive. So now we are able to make sure that the tile grout goes completely and fully in between the tile joint. to mix some grout. Um, now we've prepared our wall, make sure it's all nice and clean. Um, for this, what we need is a small tub. 
um, with some clean water. And we also need the grout powder. This is a very popular grout used by tilers. Um, as you can see, it's got very good properties to it. Um, it's highly flexible, it's crack resistant, um, and it's suitable for power showers and wet rooms. So, what we're going to use is we're going to use a bucket trowel and we're going to mix our powder in, into the water, like so. It's always good practice not to try to try not to get the trowel wet in the water because then it, the wet trowel goes into the powder and it can make the powder inside the bag damp and that can cause a chemical reaction and make the grout inside the bag go lumpy and they're un unsuitable for use in the future. So now I've added a small amount of powder. I'm going to mix. So we're going to gradually mix the powder in to the water. We get a smooth, nice, smooth paste. So we're now mixing the powder into the water. And what we want is the consistency of a nice thick batter, if you could picture a nice batter mix. So when we take the grout out of the bucket and we lower it, we've got a dropping consistency. For those who saw previous videos of me mixing tile adhesive, you'll notice that the adhesive stayed on the trowel, whereas when we mix in grout, it's important that it falls off the trowel. So this is the correct consistency. Any wetter than that, and it'll be too runny, and um, when we use, when we put the grout into the joints, because it's too runny, it'll just fall back out the joint. Now we've mixed the grout to the correct consistency, I'd just like to run through quickly with you the importance of not mixing too much grout up at once, as the grout generally has a hour to an hour and a half bucket-like consistency. So once it's mixed up and it's in the bucket, after an hour or so, it will start to set and be unsuitable to put into the joints of the grout. The tool we use to apply the grout onto the tile surface is called a squeegee. It's made of a soft rubber foam here, and it's got a firm plastic back into it there. So when we apply the grout to the wall, it doesn't scrape or scratch the tiles. If it would be a metal or steel surface here, like a laying on trail we'd use for sand and cement render, it would scratch the surface of the tile. So as you can see, it's a nice, soft, pliable surface there. Good. So we now need to put some wall grout onto our squeegee. So we're using our bucket trowel. We just Load it onto one side of the squeegee, like so. Just on one side, not too much, not over the whole surface of the squeegee, as you can see, just one side like so, and not overly filling the squeegee up with grout. That's about perfect. We then start from the top, we work across in columns, going across in columns, we don't go all the way down in one in a length like that, we go across in columns and work our way down. So I'm gonna put the grout on the wall. As you can see, it's the right consistency. It's not falling off the wall and running down the wall. If you put the grout on the wall and it starts running down the wall, you need to take it off and make it thicker, add a, uh, some more powder to it. Now we have some grout on the wall. We're gonna use the squeegee and we're going to hold the squeegee at approximately a 45 degree angle, like so, yeah. So then we're going to just gently 
push and massage the grout into the joints, the towel joints. As you can see, I'm just gently taking my time, making sure all the joints are full with grout, full of grout, as I'm coming across the top of the niche. As you can also see, I'm making sure as I'm going along that I'm taking off as much excess grout off the tail surface. You can see I can run my finger and it's clean. So I'm taking off all the excess grout. This is good practice because when we come to wash and clean the towels and all the surface joints, it's a lot easier to keep clean and tidy. Right, as you can see, I've loaded the grout up onto just the one side of the squeegee. And now I'm going to apply the, the grout like so. So I'm going to hold in the squeegee at approximately a 45 degree angle. We work the grout into the joints. You don't have to just go all one way in one direction like this. You can go across, down, up, as long as you must make sure that all the toll joints are full. And we're going to take off as much surface grout. Once the toll joints are full, we're going to take as much. This is going to ensure that when we come to wash and clean the surface of the towels, it's a lot quicker and easier process rather than trying to wash it off and we've got grout left on the towels like so. So we go over it and make sure that the surface of the towel is clean. And you can also see that because we scraped all the towel joints out and made sure they was nice and clean, now we've got a nice full even towel, jo towel joint with no adhesive being protruding through the joint. What I'm going to do now is just finish off this section of the wall. As you can see, I've completed here and up and around. It's very important not to do too much at once. Go all the way down with the grout, because if we do, when we come to washing the towel off, washing the grouting off, as you can see already, because it's a hot day, the grout is beginning to dry very quickly and becoming quite solid. You can see how solid that grout is getting already. You can see that coming, beginning to dry up. Okay, so we need to make sure we do not go too far ahead of ourselves. Make sure we do a small area at a time and then we can wash off without having too much of a problem. Rule of thumb is to check if it's, the grout's ready to wash off, is you should get a film, a dust film, form on the towel. As you can see there on my finger. Again, I go like so. You can see a dust film on there and it's quite dry. It's not running yet. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now I've grouted in this area here, this joint here, this joint here, up and around the niche. I need to now is to wash off all the excess grout and wash off and make sure that all the tongue joints are nice, small and full, small, even and full. So we use a, a bucket of cold water, clean cold water and a sponge. And what we need to make sure of that when we wash up, we, the sponge is really quite dry. So we give it a good rinse, a good wring out. So the sponge is not full of water. It's quite, it's quite dry. So holding the sponge flat on the surface of the tiled area and work our way up and across in small sections, making sure that we keep the sponge nice and flat on the wall. This is not good practice because doing so can dig out the grout joint and make hollow joints in the grout. So nice, smooth, flat, nice, firm, across. Just making sure the sponge is nice and flat 
and regularly wash the sponge out, rinse the sponge out. Don't just keep washing off without rinsing the sponge out. It's important that we get rid of the excess grout on the sponge regularly so we get a nice clean surface. So, and again across. If we have too much water on the sponge and we start washing off, excess water will come up down on the sponge and it will start to wash the grout out of the joints. This is not good. You don't want to be having water running down. If you can see, it's already starting to wash the grout out of the joints. Okay, so please remember when you're washing off the grout, make sure the sponge is really run, run dry. John. Right, we're now going to grout the inside of the niche. And as before I showed you, I loaded the grout up along the long side of the squeegee. Because this is a narrow area, I'm going to load the narrow side of the squeegee up. This is going to make it easier for me to control any excess grout falling. This is a better practice to do it like this, using the short end when it's a little narrow strip like this, than it's trying to get that in there. So this is, so when you're going in a little small area, little small niches like that, use the narrow end of the squeegee. Again, Load the top up, the thin and gently. Again, making sure we take as much excess grout off the surface of the tile. Okay, now I've grated the inside of the niche. I'm just going to check again, making sure that it's grout's not too wet. It's ready to wash off. So I can see I haven't got that dry dust now, have I? It's like a wet mix still. So I know now by that I need to leave this for probably another two or three minutes. Right, okay. Now we've left it for a few minutes to dry. We can start to wash off the excess grout on the tile surface. Keeping our sponge nice and flat so we get a nice smooth finish on the tile joint. Keep rinsing our sponge out. Give a close inspection guys, don't stand back and look like here. Okay, always get a nice close up so you can see that you've washed all the excess grout off the front of the tail and that the tail joint is nice and full.
So what we're going to do now is we're going to fill in around these pipes and what we can use, we can use a pallet knife or a small tool. This is a small tool and it's a lot more easier to access into awkward little areas. As you can see, it's quite thin, quite small. So it's, we can get into this underneath these areas quite easily. We can just load it up with some grout. We can get underneath, it's quite thin here, this cross here, and it's quite easy to get in and under these awkward little areas here. We, we really struggle to get the squeegee in here, in this small little area. So, gently just push the grout into the void, into the gap, so we get a nice, full, even fill in there. Just a little bit more. Okay, so there we have that one. Now, again, spinning the bottom part up. How easy it is to get in those small awkward areas. And this last piece here. It's really, really difficult to get all the excess grout off the outside of these areas as we're not using the squeegee but as long as we don't leave the grout to dry for too long it won't be such a big issue to to wash it off as you can see it's a lot messier than it was when we was using the squeegee but because it's such a small area it won't be too difficult to wash off right cool. so now we're going to wash the second the last the bottom section off so before I do so, I'm just going to test and make sure that we have that film on the tile. It's not too runny, got a nice dry film. Again, we can see a nice dry film there on my finger. I'm gonna now start to wash off, keeping the sponge nice and flat. You can see now I've come to the bottom part of the wall I'm on my knees I've got my knees that way that I can know that my eye eyesight is in line with the with the tail grouting and I've got good visual over the area that I'm washing off so that I can make sure that as I'm washing off all the tail joints are full and even it's not very good practice to be standing up and doing this, I can't possibly see that I'm leaving the toll joints nice and full and even. Whereas if I'm here, I can see exactly, I can make sure all my toll joints are full and even. Just gently going around the pipes. So now I'm happy that I've washed the tiled area off and all the tile joints are nice, full and even. I'm going to make sure that I rinse my sponge out and wring it out and not leave it overnight full of grout residue because the next day the grout will be all solid and not fit for use anymore. So I'll make sure that all the residue grout's out and it's, it's maintained. What I need to do now is, using a dry cloth, I'm going to wipe down and clean up, polish up all the tile area. This can't be done immediately straight away. You have to wait for the grout to dry. And again, you need to wait until you can get your finger. And if you hear that squeaky noise, then the tile surface is still wet, okay? What we need to ideally wait for is the tile surface to completely dry and we get a cement dust film form on the surface of the tile. As you can see, it's now, it's beginning to dry. I would say in another 10 minutes, this will be ready to give a final polish and clean off. So our final procedure to finish off the grouting is we're gonna use a nice clean rag that hasn't got any oil on it or any soap residue 
or any bleach or anything. It's a nice clean rag or to clean tea towel will be fine. Um, and we're just going to fold it quite neatly. So it fits nice and snug in the palm of our hand. Okay, this is what we don't want. Okay, because it can wrap and dig into the grout, the grout joint. So again, just fold it over. So it fits nicely in the palm of my hand. And rule of thumb is again, we can't hear the squeaking now, can we? Towel's nice and dry. So now we're ready to just gently take off any excess dust that forms on the face or the glaze of the towel. And as I work my way down, I can see that I've made a mistake and there is some grout joints here that have been missed and we need to get our sponge and get off this surface grout and make sure this towel joint is nice and even. So gently now, go over just that area, just the area that we missed. Okay. So now that We've made good that area. We'll leave that little area there to dry and we'll carry on. Cook. Go on, yeah, go on. Right now, we're buffing up the surface of the towel, taking off any of the residue dust and grout film that forms on the surface of the towel. Now I can see that the towel surface is nice and shiny and clean. Perfect. Okay, so working our way down from top to bottom, keeping the cloth nice and flat, gently just polishing the towels. As you can see now, look, I can run my finger along the towel and there's no dust or residue on my finger. If I go to an area that I haven't cleaned and I run my finger along, you can see the dust and the residue. This is what we need to get rid of. And just check, double check that all my towel joints are full and even. And if there's any little pinholes or any little gaps, it's very important to do it now as this can cause problems in the future as water will get behind these little pinholes and gaps in the grout. And then once the water gets in behind the towel, it will only be a matter of time before the towel starts to fall off the wall. If we're using, working on a plasterboard background, the water will soon get behind the tile if there's a crack in the grout or a pinhole, and it will soon damage the plasterboard and the tiles will soon start to fall off the wall. <clears throat> As you can see, we have a pinhole here. So there's a possibility of water going running down and crawling in there and causing water damage behind the tiled surface. So, what we do is we can use our small tool like we did before when we went around the pipes and make it good. Okay, now we just need to wait for the grout to dry to, and then we can go over again with the sponge 
and then finally give it a wipe with the cloth. That's it, John. Now you know how to grout, it's your turn to do it.